Hi, everybody. Welcome to Christensen Wealth Management. I'm Michael Christensen. Thanks for taking time out of your day to watch this stock market update and industry sector review for the week ending Friday, March 9th, 2018. We have had an amazingly volatile week for the U.S. stock market. We had some big swings uh, last Friday and Monday this week. Then we went sideways for about four days. And then today, bam, the market shot up like a rocket and ended on a positive note. There is a lot more volatility yet to come, but let's take a look at each one of those charts individually. Before I do, I'd like to begin with the quote of the week. And this week's quote is from Robert Brault. If you don't know who Robert Brault is, he is a freelance writer who has contributed to magazines and newspapers in the United States for over 40 years. His short thoughts and observations are quoted on thousands of internet sites each day. Robert Brault once said, Enjoy the little things, for one day you may look back and realize they were the big things. Those are some wise words from Robert Brault. All right, let's take a look at those charts, beginning with the Dow Jones Industrial Average. Here we have the Dow Jones Industrial Average, and in fact, all of the charts that you're about to see in this video are six-month charts from September 9th, 2017 to March 9th, 2018. This chart of the Dow Jones shows that as of Friday the 9th of March, we had a five-day moving average in red, moving back above the blue 20-day moving average, which is a sign of short-term strength because we had this uh, nice little rally from March 2nd up to March 9th here, pull, pushing that that short-term indicator back into a sign of strength. However, we have a 50-day moving average, which is the purple line, above the 20-day moving average, which is the blue line, and that tells us that we still have a significant amount of intermediate-term weakness. So we're not out of the woods yet, <clears throat> but for the last few days, we've had a nice rally and we've uh, got some strength going here. So we need to look for some follow-through next week. Now, a couple things I want you to see is we connect a line from the top of January 26th and we draw it down here and you will see that the top of February 26th makes a declining tops trend line. That is a line of resistance. The stock market, in this case the Dow Jones, needs to get above that if we're going to move higher. This means that we had the all-time high followed by a lower high, which is bearish. And if this turns into another lower high, then that is even more bearish. So next week is a week where there's going to be a lot to be told about this chart. Um, we, If we break above it on Monday or Tuesday or all week for that matter, then we may go all the way back up to those all-time highs. But as of Monday... We're sitting right there on that resistance line, and we need to either break through it or we're going back down. So stay tuned. I'll keep an eye on that for you and post some information about it on Monday. As far as support goes, if I zoom out and I show you where the Dow Jones was on the election night of 2016, and you draw a line here, that is our support line. You will see that the night of the election, back here, November 2016, the market came down and touched it right here and created the second point of that support line. Then we rallied strong all the way up here to January 26, 2017, and then we crashed down and boom, hit that low, which just happens to line up perfectly with election night, with September 2017, and now we have that February 8th low, which makes point number three. This line down here is the support line that is keeping this bull market alive. If we break, if we ever come down below that and we break through it, then look out below. But as of right now, those are, this is the resistance line for the Dow, and this is the support line for the Dow. So next week we should see, um, some interesting information coming out of this chart. Here's the six month chart of the S&P 500 stock index. And you can see that the five day average in red is above the blue 20 day average. 
giving us a sign of short-term strength. And we should have that since we had a nice rally from March 1st up to here on March 9th. And the intermediate term indicator is still uh, showing weakness because the blue 20-day average is still below the purple 50-day average. Um, but <clears throat> to be fair, the 20-day average has formed a bottom and is trying to rise. So we'll see if we can get more strength out of it uh, in the next week. As far as the resistance line goes, you saw the one on the Dow. And if I draw that resistance line here, <clears throat> from the all-time high to the next lower high, uh, we broke above that declining trend on the 9th of March. So there is a possibility that the S&P 500 will rally back up to all-time highs. We'll see. Uh, we'll take it one day at a time, and I'll keep you posted on social media if there's anything worth knowing regarding this chart. Here is the six-month chart of the NASDAQ 100. And you can see this is definitely the strongest one in the bunch. We have a five-day moving average in red that's above the 20, indicating short-term strength. And the 20-day moving average in blue is above the purple 50-day moving average. So that's intermediate-term strength as well. So we've got all cylinders are firing for the NASDAQ 100 as of March 9th. And if I draw a trend line of resistance like I did on the other charts you can see that on March 9th we did in fact break above that <clears throat> and we not only that but we made a new all-time high for the NASDAQ 100. However there is one thing to be aware of regarding the strength of the NASDAQ 100 that is m half of this return uh, of the um, performance from the 8th of February from here all the way up to here, half of the percentage gain in that rally was from only five stocks. So the other thing to tell you is that of the 100 stocks of the NASDAQ 100, 25% of the stocks in the NASDAQ 100 have actually lost value since this day of February 8th. So only five stocks have uh, been responsible for 50% of the gain and one quarter of the stocks in this index have actually continued lower. So there is some uh, caution to be taken away from that fact, but we'll just have to keep that in the back of our minds because right now everything is looking strong for the NASDAQ 100. Here's the six month chart of the S&P 500 material stock index. As of March 9th, we got a short term strength uh, indicator as that red five day average crossed above the blue 20, but the blue, is, blue 20 is still below the purple 50 day moving average. So we still have intermediate term weakness for materials. Uh, we'll just have to kind of keep an eye on this one as well. If you draw a resistance line across there, uh, it is clearly broken. So that is, uh, that's a good sign. We just need a little bit more than just one day to give us that uh, strong feeling that this is uh, going to be a rally and not just a one-day wonder. Here's the S&P 500 Information Technology Stock Index. It looks very similar to the NASDAQ 100 because uh, the top five stocks that were responsible for that big rally in the NASDAQ make up about the top five stocks in this index. And so this thing is absolutely firing in all cylinders. We got that five day average well above the 20, indicating short term strength. The 20 day average in blue is above the 50 day average in purple. So we got intermediate term strength as well. And I don't need to uh, connect the dots here, but if you draw a line from here to here and beyond, you will see that we broke above that uh, tops line on the 9th of March. So everything is looking really good here for the information technology stock index. Here's the six month chart of the S&P 500 consumer staples stock index. And we did get a bounce or a little uh, rally on March 9th, but this particular index is still uh, struggling <clears throat> quite a bit. But the five day average in red is just about ready to cross that 20 day average in blue. So give it another day and we may have a short-term strength confirmation there 
but that blue 20-day average is still way below that 50-day average, which gives us a, a very large amount of uh, intermediate-term weakness to deal with. So uh, just looking at the chart, you can tell it's weak, but it's trying to dig its way out of the basement, and we'll just see where we go the week of March 12th. Here's the six-month chart of the S&P 500 Industrials Stock Index. We've got, as of March 9th, a short-term strength crossover between the 5- and the 20-day moving average. And the 20-day average is still below the 50-day, so we have intermediate-term weakness uh, on this index still. But uh, the price, which is the black line, is above the 5, the 20, and the 50-day moving average. So it's, it's given it a pretty good... Uh, run and trying to dig its way out of the basement and give us some strength signals and it got its first one um, on March 9th here. If I do that uh, declining tops resistance line you can see that we did in fact break above that on March 9th. So we'll see where we go the week of March 12th and see if we can get some follow through on this rally that we have had since March 2nd. Here is the S&P 500 Utilities Stock Index, and this thing still cannot get out of its own way. It is just hanging out down here in the bottom. Doesn't doesn't have any strength at all. It's pretty tired. The uh, five-day average is still below the 20, and the 20 is still below the 50. So we still have short and intermediate-term weakness, which is obvious by just looking at the chart. Uh, we need to start making some higher highs down here and uh, <laughs> pulling up out of this, this nosedive and some this sideways action here. So nothing attractive about utilities, and I really don't feel there's any more commentary needed after looking at this chart. Here's the S&P 500 Consumer Discretionary Stock Index, and right now we have the five-day average in red is above the 20, and it looks like the... 20 is now above the 50, so we have short-term strength and intermediate-term strength on the uh, consumer discretionary. And if we do a declining tops uh, resistance line, it's close, but it did peak its head above the, uh, the line as of the close of Friday, March 9th. So we'll see if we can get some more follow-through on this, and maybe it'll push its way back up to all-time highs over the next few weeks. But we'll just keep an eye on it and take it one day at a time. But right now, things are looking a lot better for this than they were a week ago. Here is the Dow Jones Financials Stock Index. And we had a beautiful rally on the 9th of March. And we got above the prior high, which was February 26th. And we've got the 5-day average in red is above the 20-day average, giving us that intermediate term strength signal. But the 20-day average is still below the 50, giving us a intermediate-term uh, weakness signal. And the 20-day average is trying to, it, ha it looks like it's bottomed, and it's trying to get back above that 50-day average. So we'll just have to keep an eye on it. And same deal if I do a uh, declining tops resistance line. You can see that we broke above it on March 9th. So right now, things are looking a lot better for financials, and we'll just keep an eye on it and see if we can get some follow-through the week of the 12th. Here's the six-month chart of the Dow Jones Oil and Gas Index, also the energy sector. And it has had very little life since uh, the first week of February. Just this very choppy sideways action and has not rejected it but we did have a nice little rally on March 9th. Got it off the bottom anyway. And the, uh, the five-day moving average is still below the... Nope, the five-day moving average is above the 20-day moving average. So we got short-term strength, but it's, it's not a lot of strength, but it's there. And we'll see if we can get some follow-through in the week ahead. But you can see that the blue 20-day moving average is stay, still way below the 50. So that, that is a tremendous amount of intermediate-term weakness. We need to see this energy index really get back above this February 26th high. 
um, and start making some higher highs again. But right now it's still um, it's still right where it was on February 14th. Just kind of a lot of sideways movement. Here's the six month chart of the Dow Jones Healthcare Stock Index and we have the five day moving average back above the 20 day moving average indicating short term strength but the 20 is still below the 50 day moving average so still intermediate term weakness on that. Uh, we did get the price um, in, of this index above the five, the 20 and the 50 day moving averages so that's a really good sign. Very nice rally since March 1st and uh, they're all trying to pull their way pull their way way higher and as of March 9th we did break above the previous high of February 26th so it's uh, pretty clear sailing um, from here on up but we'll have to take it one day at a time I'm not entirely convinced that we can go all the way up to the top of Mount Everest here but we'll see uh, anything can happen and if I draw that declining tops resistance line you'll see that it easily broke that back on like the 7th of March. So uh, 7th, 8th, and 9th, we broke above that declining tops line. So uh, it's looking pretty good right now for healthcare. We'll see if we can get some follow through the week of the 12th. Here's the six month chart of the Dow Jones Real Estate Stock Index. And uh, it had a nice little rally since March 2nd. It uh, got that five day moving average back above the 20, so that's a good sign. And as of March 9th, the price of the index closed above these two prior highs from February 26th and February 16th. So the price is above the 5 and the 20, which is good, but we still have the 20 day average below the 50 day average in purple. So still intermediate term strength. It's going to take a few more weeks to fix that if in fact it does. But right now it's it's uh, it's making a little bit of progress. We got a a new high for the the month or the last 30 days, and we got a short term strength indicator. So that's good. On this particular index, if we draw a declining tops resistance line, um, we're sitting about right there. I mean, if you want to look at that, that's probably oh sorry, uh, put it right there. We're sitting right on that line and the week of the 12th we'll either break it and start heading higher which will be really good for this index or it'll get pushed uh, back down again. We'll have to just wait and see. Here's the six month chart and the final chart of the day. The Dow Jones Transportation Stock Index and it's uh, sitting right below that high of February 26th. So not only that but it's sitting right on that 50 day moving average. So we'll have to see if there's any follow through with the Dow Jones Transportation Index next week. Uh, we have the five day average in red is back above the 20 day average in blue, giving us short term strength indicator confirmation, but still a lot of intermediate term weakness as long as we're below that 50 day moving average. And on this one, I'll go ahead and draw that, that line and same deal yeah and we popped above there on March 9th broke that declining tops trend line so uh, it's it's given a good fight we just need another day or more to uh, really get a good feeling about this transportation index thanks again for watching this market update I hope you found the charts and information useful the volatility is no doubt here and it's here to stay so buckle up I will keep an eye on things for you and we'll just see where we go in the week ahead. Before you go, please take a moment to subscribe to this YouTube channel by clicking that subscribe button and then click the little bell next to it so you'll be notified whenever additional videos are posted. And in the summary description of this YouTube video, you'll find links to the Christensen Wealth Management pages at Facebook, LinkedIn, and Twitter. So please Go to those links if you use those social media sites and like or follow Christensen Wealth Management. I can send out information very quickly on, on uh, social media. So uh, go ahead and sign up for those so I can communicate the best I can with you. Have a great day and a great week and look forward to talking to you soon. Bye-bye.